Hello everybody, Chris Gethin here and welcome to another episode of the Knowledge and Mileage podcast. Now, if you guys have been following me on my Insta stories at the time of this interview, you will know that every single day I've been on a bike which has been putting me through the ringer. And, uh, you know, I, I was a little bit skeptical to begin with because I thought, how on earth am I going to get so depleted in such a short and efficient time out of, uh, out of this bike? And th- that, that is the modality of, you know, what, what you have created, I guess, that, you know, to make sure that you are completely depleted once you've done, uh, once you've done a session. And this is a Carol AI. Carol AI is the bike, you know, artificial intelligence is uh, something that we're obviously progressing in. And this is what has really nailed the head, nailed the, nailed it on the head when it comes to the efficiency of high intensity interval training. It's basically like hit on steroids. It is full on. So uh-huh. welcome to the show, Rahul. Rahul is the director of, uh, of Carol AI. So if you could just tell us a little bit about you, um, Rahul, and how you got into this modality for fitness enthusiast. Chris, thank you so much for having me on the show. And I'm really excited to talk to you. And that, you know, it's a great question. So I think it's, it's funny for people when they, when they hear about this, they start laughing. I used to work for Anheuser-Busch, you know, and I was, my lifestyle was so anti-fitness and exercise you know, I was just not doing myself any favors. And then while I'm working at this, uh, you know, for this big, you know, I had a great time working in this conglomerate, you know, but I'm working here, drinking all these beers, getting fatter by the day. And in the meantime, there are these, you know, this team of people who saw actually this research being um, spoken about on television. And the guy who was on TV was saying, I do this exercise and I'm type 2 diabetic. After doing this exercise just a couple of times a week, after five weeks, I no longer have to take my medication. You know, so these founders are like, this is insane. You know, this is crazy. While I'm working at Budweiser getting fatter, these guys are thinking, how can they build a product that's going to um, help change people's lives? You know, this delivers such results in such a short exercise. And then they, you know, eventually they reach out to me. So um, I'm related to one of the co-founders. And so they were like to me, or advisors, they were like to me, look, this is a really cool product. Do you want to get involved? And I said, oh man, if this can actually get me healthy for someone who loathes exercise at the time anyway, if this could help me kind of get my life back on track, at least from a health perspective, I would definitely be into it. And I'd like to go check it out. You know, fast forward six months later, I was healthier than ever. I was more active than ever. I had, my life had just completely changed. And I thought that is definitely something to worth, worth pursuing. So then I quit my job. And then I jumped straight onto the Carol bandwagon and here I am today, you know, like really firmly flying the flag that after it's just changed my life, quite frankly, Chris, like after it has actually impacted me so heavily, I really, I really think that is, you know, the time is now to get it out there. So that's what, that's what I'm doing. Fantastic. So now you've actually transitioned into the fitness arena now. So do you find yourself uh, not drinking as many Budweiser's? Yeah. <laughs> you know what? This is so yes and no, actually. So I find it easier or I, you know, I have that inner voice that'll tell me not to drink the bud on like a Tuesday or a Wednesday evening when I otherwise would have done like on my, on my own, you know, maybe five years younger me would have been playing Xbox or whatever when I'm watching some TV, had a couple of beers out and I would have done that. Now I, I don't do those kind of things, but on a Friday, I still, I still enjoy it. And that's, I think, one of the really cool things about Carol, and I think one of the things that we stand for as a brand is that, you know, we're not trying to take you away from other stuff that you like. And primarily, people who enjoy our product are people who, essentially, they want to have their cake and eat it, right? They, they, they want to, they want to be fit and healthy and look really great, but they also don't want to invest the time into into doing all of the, you know, the hard slog and doing everything they needed to do. So we're kind of giving them an easy out. Well, and so we don't want to tell them to not drink the buds. We're saying go for it. Just kind of do yourself a favor and have a healthy heart, <laughs> so your right. body can handle it. Basically. Got it, got it. And 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 you're based in New York uh, now, correct? We're right. Yeah, That's right. Yeah. So and where were you living before? I was living in London. Yeah. So London is definitely the other place where people do like to binge drink a little bit more often. Like you'll see people. Tra- like the, the pubs can be so full they're out on the street and this could be in the middle of winter people don't tend to care you know i, I guess you become numb after a couple of beers and you don't feel it <laughs> the proverbial beer jacket dude i'm telling you when i was working at bud 
you know, so I worked around Wembley Stadium and that was like, that was, you know, the biggest football, um, obviously football's like the biggest sport in Europe ever. And then, you know, Wembley Stadium is like, the home of football in in the UK. And I was selling beers around there. You should have seen it on a match day. I mean, it, it puts like the Super Bowl to shame, like what the what the bars would be around there. It was like truckloads, literally truckloads of people would arrive at this pub like six hours before the game. And by the time the game is, is starting, like half of them can't even walk to the stadium. I mean, it's just ridiculous. Obviously, for, for Budweiser, that was just like we were rubbing our hands. And that's, I mean, okay, I can't say that. I can't say that. They drink responsibly. <laughs> you know, we drink responsibly, have one pint, you know, two pints max, and then, and then enjoy yourself, you know. <laughs> yeah, I, I think like the, the, the day off or the celebration or the game is just a justification to get to the bar, really. Uh, have you noticed how so many English sports are like that? Like cricket, you know? It's just like a, a three-day game <laughs> that people just go and they just drink beers around, or, or, or you know, rackets, or all of these like all of these English sports are just an excuse to have a jolly, beagling, you know, all of this stuff. Yeah, yeah, I, I've I've noticed that. Obviously, like I I, I left uh, the UK in the nineties, but I just see that I, I just see the complete difference in different countries that I either live in or I visit in. You know, for instance, you you go to Finland and after a day of stress. They will jump in the sauna in the UK after a day of stress, go straight to the pub. You know, just different, yeah. different strokes yeah, for different, different folks. Yeah, yeah, completely. Right? Anyway, can you explain a little bit? Because I'm sure the listeners and viewers are thinking, OK, what is this Carol AI bike that Chris is talking about? Can you tell us what Carol stands for and what what is the, what is the bike? So Carol stands for the cardiovascular optimization logic. If you've ever seen iRobot, there is an AI software called Vicky, and she is the software that controls all these robots. We've kind of took a little inspiration from that, that Carol is an AI software, that's the name of the software, and the software controls the bike. So I'll tell you what it does. The headline is that the bike gives you the same benefits of a 45-minute workout in just two 20-second maximum intensity sprints. That's just 40 seconds of hard work, right? It uses AI to calculate the resistance you need to work at for those two 20 second sprints to guarantee that we're gonna deplete glycogen that's stored in your thigh muscles. And deplete, now here's what the science says, is that depleting glycogen, if we deplete enough of it and quickly enough, and there is enough in your thigh to do this, if we can wipe out the glycogen, uh, then that will stimulate a series of, um, well, molecular changes that will then result in improved cardiovascular fitness. And over decades of research with these scientists, it has shown, I mean, this, we're just applying new tech to old science. I mean, this stuff is actually really developed in the 50s. You know, the, the, the research shows that, you know, all those two 20 second sprints are actually all you need to do to achieve those benefits. So that's what the bike is doing. The bike is, is reading your biometrics when you sit on the machine and is calculating the exact resistance you need to pedal at to reach that maximum intensity to deplete the glycogen and essentially just give you those benefits in 45 minutes. That's what it does. Right, okay, so to get those benefits, like from a cellular level, you said in a 10 minutes so of, with those two sprints, because you do have the warm up, then you have the right. recovery, then you sprint again, and then you have the warm down. But within that 10 minutes, from a cellular level, is that the equivalent of 45 minutes that you'd get in performance, in fitness, in fat loss? What exactly? That's a really great question. And for the listeners who can't see, I'm smiling right now. Because, so, we, we and so Carol's never paid for any research. I think it's uh, cool to note. People who have researched Carol's, you know, institutions like the American Council on Exercise, they've tested the efficacy of Carol across many different um, biomarkers. So weight loss, for example, uh, cardiovascular fitness with VO2 max, um, body fat percentage, waist circumference, uh, triglyceride levels, cholesterol levels, blood sugar levels, insulin sensitivity, right? So they've, they've gone through the nines. And it's a good question because if you just did one isolated exercise, people would say that is the equivalent or, or the research says that's the equivalent of doing one 45 minute workout. But if you do this over time and you commit to it, it actually compounds to be delivering you on average across those metrics two to three times more result or better result than if you were to do uh, half an hour of running every day, for example, or if we do, we're meeting the 150 minutes of medium intensity cardio quota a week. That's what the American Heart Association, for example, recommends that you should do as a healthy adult, as a bare minimum. 
uh, you know, or do two 45 minute runs or, or three 45 minute runs in the, in the, in the week. That would be the same as doing, um, you know, three carol rides. But again, if you do it over time, you're actually going to be doubling or even tripling the results you would get if you were to do the 45 minute runs. Right. Okay. And yeah, you're going to be doubling and tripling, I guess, because as you said, it calibrates, it remembers your last session because I guess in the lab, you know the person that you're putting on the bike. You're gonna see if they're overweight at 200 pounds or if they're lean and muscular at 200 pounds. But if the bike does not know that, it has to calibrate in order for you to evolve session after session. So, oh my gosh, that is exactly right. And that is where the magic comes in because look, you as a human being, and especially as you're exercising, your fitness goals and what you need to do to achieve them is a moving target. It's just like, and I know Chris, you, <laughs> you know your way around the weight room. It's just like if you're going to start lifting dumbbells, you know, let's. I'm going to do it to my, uh, you know, because I'm much scornier than you are. I'm going to do it in a way that I understand. You know, I'm going to go and I'm going to calculate how much weights I need, to, how much weight I need to lift to put on some muscle in my bicep, right? So I'm going to do, I'm going to do my one rep max. I'm going to discount to 80% of that. Say I did 15 pounds. I'm going to do 80% of that. I'm going to do five reps. Okay. Then next time I know I'm keeping a little note. Okay. Because I know me, like you said, the lab technicians, they know you in this case, they, they understand what you are, right? As I'm getting fitter or as I'm getting stronger to continue the muscle building analogy, I know what my one, one rep max is, max is going to be. I know if I take a break from the gym and I come back, I've lost a little bit of muscle, my one rep max might change. And so it's exactly the same with the cardio. Like, we are, tr we are training you, to, you know, we're pushing you, and we're identifying what your max is. And as you get fitter, we're going to constantly update the workout so that it's always matching what your maximum is going to be. If you go on holiday for a while and then you come back and you've lost a bit, we're going to know and we're going to make it a little bit easier for you so that you can get back on track. Because, you know, if you go, if, imagine you go into the weight room, and then you go on holiday for two months, and then you come back. Are you going to lift the exact same weight that you did before? Especially for someone like me who's not a, like a professional weightlifter? Hell no. So it's exactly the same theory. And exactly what you said is another really important point is that, you know, even if you were to put in some metrics on another machine, oh, yeah, I'm 25 years old, I weigh 500 pounds, and I'm six feet or whatever, you know. That may not be the same as another guy with those same metrics. One could be muscle mass, one could be fat. You just don't know. And so the bike can actually calculate, it collects a lot of data from you while you're riding. And it'll understand this, it'll understand whether you are actually, you know, where you are as a body and what, what you're able, capable of doing. And then we'll deliver the workouts to make sure that you're achieving the results. I mean, exactly what you said, Chris. I mean, it's, a, it, it's adapting to you. And that's why the results are so phenomenal. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And, uh, and the, the one thing that I do like uh, about it as well is that you have to be engaged. A lot of us, you, you know, we do cardio, not because we want to, because we have to. And then we pick up the device and, you know, listen to podcasts or email <laughs> or scroll through social networks where you do not have this opportunity in this very short window. You have to be present. So what I really like about it is that you go from your parasympathetic nervous system straight into your sympathetic and back because in your recovery between these sprints you have carol talking to you because you have the headphones on while well, i have and listening especially when you're using the tiger the tiger uh, version and telling you okay now deep breaths and you have to take in a deep breath and you hold it and exhale to go from that sympathetic to that parasympathetic nervous system why was that included in carol That's a really good question. Um, because it's how you are designed to train your heart. Um, you know, there is no biological need for us to go run 20 whatever miles in one straight in like under three hours, right? That's just, there's no need. Basically, endurance training is not a natural biological um, purpose for the body. But, you know, running away from tigers is. Right. And so we're trying to simulate to the best of our ability that, uh, you know, that moment of running away from tiger. And, you know, I heard someone very, I thought it was great. He said, like, if you're running away, so if you watch National Geographic, right, and you see the, the gazelle chomping on some grass, minding his own business, and then a che cheetah comes out of nowhere. And it's just like, next thing you know, the gazelle's like, whoa, and it's going for it. Then, you know, bah, you see this crazy high octane chase. Then maybe the, the cheetah is going to start chasing another gazelle or it's going to bail. I like, forget that. I can't be bothered. The gazelle's too quickly, running too quickly. Um, you know, the cheetah will stop and then the gazelle will kind of 
realize the cheetah stops. And then next thing you know, the gazelle's like eating the grass again as if nothing happened, like just going straight back down to normal. And that's what we're trying to simulate to your body. We're trying to tell your body that, you know, um, you're not actually, you're living in a world where running away from tigers is, is, a, is just a, a constant threat. And it's not something that you need to train for, or, you know, you need to do anything abnormal to do. It's just what you do. You run away and you come down. You don't even need to do the warm up. The tiger just comes out of nowhere. Off you go. Now, you know, that there is, a, there's another, another reason is that, you know, from a, from the science, or the, I guess from the molecular point of view in this, what we're doing is we're taking you from 0% intensity to 100% intensity, just like that, right? Instantaneously. And in doing that, we don't give your heart a chance to respond to the stress. So what we're doing essentially is we're dropping your body in the deep end for a demanding in energy. So your body's gone from zero demand to 100% demand for energy. Your heart's not able to fuel the exercise. So all of a sudden you have to recruit other fuel sources. And what do you do? You use the glycogen. And then we just go back to the old theory is that, you know, when you deplete glycogen and enough of it, you will stimulate the molecular changes that then really will uh, lead to improved cardiovascular fitness. So then we're just essentially, you know, instead of touching your left ear with your right arm, we're touching it with your, with your left arm. Um, and, and that's how it's doing it. So we don't actually want your heart to be able to feel the sprints. And if you look, actually, we have data that can show you your heart, your heart rate spikes after the sprints over, which I think is pretty cool. Yeah, that, that is really cool because I guess that's what's going to lead to a lot of that fat burning extended past that short period of time that you're doing cardiovascular exercise. So I have various programs out there, uh, whether you're preparing for an Ironman triathlon, because I like to I like to participate in a lot of hybrid athleticism, like ultra marathon, Ironman triathlon, but bodybuilding as well. So I like to be versatile. So I have a lot of people following a fat loss diet, and that's usually steady state cardio. However, if they're uh, in uh, a calorie surplus, then I don't mind them doing high intensity interval training because now I don't have to worry so much about their cortisol levels being systemically spiked, especially if they're lacking in sleep, different life, lifestyle changes as well. But what I notice is usually if I do a lot of high intensity interval training, uh, I measure my heart rate variability and it, it, sends, it, it tends to tank pretty quick, you know, if, especially if there's a lot of stress involved. But I've noticed that my HRV has not tanked whatsoever participating on the carol over the past couple of weeks. I'd love to know from you if you know why that is, and if so, why? That's a really good question. Uh, I will preface what I'm saying that I am not a medical practitioner. <laughs> and what I say is um, informed conjecture, let's put it that way. So. Look, we have tested the Carol bike um, or, or this for inflammatory markers, especially some around the heart. Um, uh, and what we've seen actually, and, and actually I've even heard some researchers discuss this type of exercise and they, they do give very good reasons why. Uh, you know, because the heart is, the, the heart rate is only elevated for such a short time, we are not actually causing any micro tears on the muscle tissue and we're not actually stressing it that much at all. You know, with tr so with traditional exercise, and now this really is at least what what I think. With with what I call traditional exercise, steady state cardio, what you were saying, you know, long bouts of running or endurance training. You know, I think it's all ultimately a method of depleting a lot of glycogen quickly and like getting to that point. So think about it like this: you know, you're you're running down the road, you know, running, running. You're you're breathing in the air and your your heart's pumping away. When you get super tired, you know, you hit the wall or you run out of breath. And then you push yourself a little bit further. It's not controversial to say at that point, you're going to get a bit fitter that you push your body to the point where it needs to adapt. You know, what's actually happening at that point is that you actually then start to recruit large amounts of glycogen. right? And that's when we're going to start. We start to see that the rapid glycogen depletion at that stage uh, then again triggers the molecular changes. Right? I'm paraphrasing. Like I said, this is this is my idea. And so what we're doing with the Carol is like we're capturing that glycogen burning moment without the need to run out of breath essentially beforehand. So we're not pushing your heart to like stress really hard. We're not like calling on for other hormonal changes or we're not asking this to spike or that to go crazy to achieve that glycogen depletion moment. All we're doing is we're making, you know, we're, we're pushing you to that moment for a split second and then your heart's going to go up and then it's going to go back down again. And like I said, that is what 
the body is designed to do, and which is why the HRV doesn't take a hit, which is why there is no inflammation, is because this is how we were supposed to exist. Like this is how we how we train, right? There is a biological need for this to run away from tigers, so that's how we're set up, and that that's at least how I believe. Um, why I believe that is the case. Okay. All right. Cool. That's a good answer. So, you know, one thing, I, I, and uh, maybe this will this could be an observational study for you guys as well. I wear. I haven't got it on this morning. I took it off yesterday because I got to replace it. Um, I wear two blood glucose monitors, two 24-hour blood glucose monitor. I have a Dexcom blood glucose monitor and uh, I have uh, an, an Abbott that I wear as well. So I have noticed a couple of very, very interesting things, which again, I said I was skeptical to begin with because I didn't think something like this could happen in a very mm. short time period, is that I do go through major glycogen depletion Okay, mm -hmm. well, especially when I do this in my in the morning, glycogen's usually a bit bit low, but I do uh, glycogen deplete very very quickly, and I measure that on my twenty four hour blood glucose monitor. As I mentioned, my heart rate variability doesn't tank as it once usually does if I do a lot of uh, high intensity interval training day after day, like I've been doing uh, on the cow bike. And I'm able to go into ketosis that much quicker because obviously I do fast. I, well, I do fast a majority of the time in the morning up until like midday. I'll do a 12 to 16 hour fast. And obviously I'd like to go into ketosis. I eat mostly fats during the day. I'll knock myself out of ketosis before I go to bed. But I get straight into ketosis very, very quickly using the, the using the, this machine, and I can only imagine that glycogen depletion is happening so quick because we are just powering through our legs. Obviously, if we're on an elliptical machine or something that isn't going to add that resistance at that precise time when we're sprinting, and then allowing us to recover, we're not going to pleat ourselves. We're not going to get into that uh, ketosis, and we're not going to be as fat adaptive. So, uh, could you, uh, have you, is this something that you guys have looked at in studies yourself? I love that you asked me that question. So, I'll give you two answers. Um, one, yes, the scientists who came up with, so the scientists who discovered that two 20 second sprints is all you need to do, or even one step before that, they discovered that enough glycogen depletion and quickly enough will stimulate the changes that we're looking for. Um, they, you know, for any scientist, they want their research to impact the world and to benefit the human race, right? So when they discovered or they found out that, you know, the glycogen depletion, um, if, if we can achieve it in 220 seconds, then you can get all the results you're looking for, you know, because th they thought, wow, okay, for all the people who don't find time to exercise, if this is a realistic, you know, alternative for them, and it's only eight minutes, including the warm-up and the cool-down, oh, oh, how fantastic. So then they were actually trying to see if they could uh, do this workout on other machines because they didn't want other barriers to crop up that would stop people from doing the exercise. They wanted the maximum impact, right? So they thought, could we do it just running around? Could we do it on elliptical or equipment that people already had? Even on regular exercise bikes, could we do it? And, 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 and they were not able to achieve the requisite intensity needed for those two 20 second sprints on anything else. For one reason, exactly as you said, for example, in the elliptical, if you're using other muscles, then you know we're not isolating the thighs, right? And there's glycogen, obviously there's glycogen everywhere, but there's enough um, glycogen in your thigh muscle that if we can isolate that, we will stimulate the um, changes that we're looking for. So we don't need to recruit it from anywhere else. And if you use the other ones, and yeah, we're not isolating the thighs. So we run a risk of actually not then depleting enough glycogen in the thigh, right? So that was one issue. The other issue is that if you start to work against resistance, before you actually are able to hit to your max. So if, for example, you're running and you start, you're stationary, and then you're, you increase your speed to get to your max speed, in theory, well, you were working against resistance to get to your max, right? Like you were increasing your speed, you're running against air resistance on the ground or whatever. And your heart then actually has a chance to respond because your heart will detect that and say, okay, I need to start, I need to up, start beating really quickly to give this guy energy. And guess what? Then we're not using the glycogen in your thighs. So one thing that's really cool about the carol is, as obviously you notice when you're riding, the, the, the exercise, the bike will walk you through the exercise and then it'll say, now you start pedaling as fast as you can, go, go, go. But there's no resistance on the wheel. So that you get to your absolute maximum speed around the flywheel without getting tired at all. And you only do that for one second. It takes, against no resistance, it takes you 
you know, no time at all to get to your max speed. And then the resistance is automatically applied for you. The pre-calculated resistance is applied for you so that you fall into this max speed. Like if you're going to imagine that running, it would be like you're kind of floating off the ground. You have a chance to run as fast as you can and then you drop back down onto the ground and boom, off you go. So it, 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 then that's what we're doing. We're, we're skipping the, the, the ability for your heart to respond to the stress. And we're also doing it on a bike because that's the only way that you can safely achieve the intensity that's needed for this, for your body to think, damn, I need to burn all that glycogen. And so, yeah, of course, we've tried it. It's, it's actually really funny. One of the founders was like, okay, I'm going to try to do it on stairs. First of all, he was like, I can't believe how many stairs I can actually run up in 20 seconds. <laughs> Second of all, uh, it's so funny. He actually sprained his ankle on the very last step. <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> Not the safest of modalities then. Well, there you go. Exactly. And so that I said, you know, we, we try to think about it. And yeah, you know, the, the, the ethos of Carol is, is, is more about the benefits that you're going to get and that we're able to give you the cardiovascular benefits in just two 20 second sprints. The bike is a byproduct. So we're not, you know, we don't look at it as like as a bike. We look at it as health in 40 seconds via a bike. Does that make sense? God, it, make, yeah, it makes total mm. sense. Much like, you know, if you look at hydrogen rich water, the tablets and the water is basically the carrier. It's the hydrogen is that that's the, the benefit. Exactly, exactly the same, exactly the same. All right, okay. So that, that, that's, that's great. So now for, for the viewers and listeners, so on this Carol bike, what I noticed was really, really good is that first of all, you have to go through like an introductory process. You have to have, I believe it was five rides. Was it five rides? Six. Have, six rides you have to go through before it allows you to go on to the next phase of increasing the sprints, increasing the intensity, increasing the length of time or having a free, free ride, which I haven't taken up. Uh, just yet. I just want the intensity. Now, you've mentioned that that 45 minute equivalent that you can get done within that eight minute period with the two, uh, two sprints. Now, the last two days, I've really, really increased the intensity by doing, oh God, it is 60 sprints, 60 sprints in the 20, 20 minutes. And I quickly realized about halfway through, I really need to pace myself more. Uh, you know, I, I, I didn't keep it, uh -huh. I don't believe, to the 85. Well, actually, I was close to the the 85% max, uh, but I, I had to bring it down a little bit just to, just to get through it. But I loved it, so I did it again this morning. Uh, so what would that... Have you studied to see what equivalent that equates to, or is that a little bit more difficult, uh, dependent on the, uh, the amount of intensity that that person is going, going at, or at 85% if you've uh, studied that? So, as you rightly said, you can only access the other rides once you've done the intro rides. And it's actually funny for people who are like, wow, like is even the two 20 second sprints, if they're like, really, is it that intense? Am I going to get the benefits? The reason you have to do the intro rides twofold. One, the bike needs to, needs to know you to collect enough information about you to understand whether you're 200 pounds of muscle or 200 pounds of fat. And, you know, how hard to push you, right? So it needs to collect enough data to be able to curate those workouts. The second reason is that we don't want to drop you into the maximum intensity straight away. And it's actually really funny, like a, a friend of mine who's, um, who's a, you know, I guess we'd call him a Navy SEAL. He's a British guy, Army guy. He did it for the first time. He, he threw up because he knows how hard he can push himself. And he just went straight in and didn't do the warm-up period. It's like, oh, my gosh, this is so intense. So for everybody who's like, really, isn't that intense? It can be really intense, as you said. Now, okay, once you've done the intro rides and you've warmed up and you know where you are, yeah, the fat burn 60, that's the ride that you're talking about. It's 60 sprints, it's eight seconds on, it's 12 seconds off, it's back to back. Um, it is, so it is a, you know, we have the fat burn 30 and that burns nine times more fat than a 45 minute run, okay? And that, that ride is only 15 minutes long. The fat burn 60 is 20 minutes long. I don't actually know how much fat it burns compared to a 45 minute run. This we put in purely from consumer demand, from maniacs like yourself, Chris, who are like, this 30 sprint exercise, I love it. I'm going to do two straight after each other, okay? It was, it was so popular with our consumers. They were like, damn, okay, we, we're really going to give them something to, to kill themselves with. But it's important to note that, you know, the, the fat burn 60 is total overkill for cardiovascular training. If, if just a healthy heart is your objective, we don't recommend doing it. If you want, if you're doing it for other things like supplementing your fitness regime, if you're doing it to, you know, burn loads of calories, then yeah, it's a really good idea. I mean... I, I'm just thinking about one time I was at, I was at a local um, studio here in Manhattan and this lady walks in 
And I'd, I'd saw her like two months ago and she just started using the carrot bike. And then she was doing two intense rides, so two of the two 20-second sprint rides with a fat burn uh, 30 and sometimes a fat burn 60, so the one you do. Uh, and she, after a couple of months, she looked amazing. And I was like, really, what, like, what else are you doing? She goes, oh, honestly, I'm just doing this. But she said that the, 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 the weight loss after she started doing the fat, fat burns, she was like, wow, I mean, it was, it was pretty aggressive. Yeah, I, <laughs> I, crazy. I, can, I, can, I can agree to that. So I'm not on a fat loss diet. I'm not on a muscle, muscle building program or anything as such at the moment. I'm going through like an experimental phase this year. No competitions mm. or anything like that. Okay. However, my family have just been in town. They were, they were here for my little nieces. And uh, I didn't train during that time. And I ate pretty slack you know I didn't eat as clean as I uh, usually do and I know my body well enough I'm very attuned to my body if I want to drop 10 pounds in 10 days I'll, I know exactly how to do it and I won't even have to measure my food and I know usually in an instant like that I would have put on weight there's no yeah. doubt about it I would have put on weight I hadn't put on any weight whatsoever during that time and I wasn't no longer doing my 30 or 40 minute cardio because all my listeners and viewers know I love cardio. I, I do cardio mm. twice a day a lot of the time. Yeah. I didn't change anything because I needed to be more present for my family. So I just got up early in the garage, just went and spent 10 minutes down there. And that was it. That. And that was it. And I hadn't love put on that. any weight. So I'm really looking forward to going through more quantification to see what can be what can be done here and uh possibly getting it onto, onto some of my clients. Now, I was introduced to you through a mutual friend, Tim Gray, uh, and I understand you guys are at his health optimization summit mm -hmm. there. What was the feedback from, uh, from people there? Did any gym owners come up or anybody from a commercial space? And you know, is, is this something for gym facilities, do you think? Absolutely. I mean, so the health optimization was a really great experience for us. I mean, it, we had so much fun there, and we're really excited to go back next year. It was, it was really, really good. Um, I, and, and Tim will say, I'm famously skeptical of the UK market as a, a biohacking or like a you know really advanced market for this kind of technology. And the health optimization summit, I think, did it was a, a huge step towards um, demolishing my skepticism. And we actually did have quite a few commercial. So we have commercial clients that have been coming up to us for a long time. And, um, and the health optimization was no exception to that. So people who work really well with Carol, we have two types, well, three types of facilities really. We have um, clinical practitioners who use this to, you know, as, as an intervention for some of their patients or their clients who are looking for weight loss or you know, diet plans or nutrition, or you know, they just, just need something to get their heart healthy. So they have a massive success in that space. Another one is what we call biohacking facilities, are pe you know, places that are kind of investing loads of money in equipment that is like the new age of the technology you know that the, the stuff that's really advancing like really new really new philosophies on how to train and how to get fit and strong and then the other the other segment that's actually growing much to my surprise is the typical gym so we actually recently were purchased by an anytime fitness um and you know they were like they were looking for something to kind of differentiate themselves in the space you know where i think everything is becoming more homogenized when it's like you know, we're just going to do a 45 minute session. We're going to do some jumping jacks and some kettlebell swings or thrusts, or whatever you call them. And so it shows how much I know, a little I know about the, the regular exercise. Um, and it, you know, it, they, I, like I said, I was like, is it really going to work? Because you, your customers are going in there because they want to spend 45 minutes working out. They love the social aspect, they love the long slog, which I get. They love the mental battle in their brain and overcoming it and thinking, yeah, I really achieved something. And yeah, sure, they're going to see results. Like, no doubt, like, they will still lose weight and feel good. This guy, you know, he had it and he was like, my, my customers are loving it. He was like, for a lot of my customers who, like you said, don't like cardio but see it as like the, like the inconvenient truth, they do it and then they're going to spend more time in the weight rack. And actually what he said, a consistent piece of feedback was that people have, have reported that their muscle, or oh, sorry, their weight training ability has improved because actually their stamina got better yeah. so some people would fatigue because they got tired rather than their muscles getting tired and he said that people have actually been coming back saying that they're now able to lift more weight and they're seeing more rapid progress and he said therefore that that actually he can see them incorporating more you know more as a supplement in his in his gym so he actually i believe originally bought it to kind of sell it sell it on its own thing and like make classes out of it that kind of thing and i think he very quickly saw that actually it works really well as an annex to the stuff he's already doing as a complement uh, and i think that's really great and i've also seen that in other places so other bodybuilders like yourself use 
the carol bike and for example one of them had never ranked in a competition before he was like cardio almost cardiophobic like again he did it because he had to but he was always so worried about losing his muscle gains um but the carol bike like as you rightly said uh, just a second ago after doing the carol bike he was able to not lose any muscle mass and have cardio and actually like a really potent cardiovascular stimulus so he actually ended up ranking i don't, can't remember what rank he came but he ended up ranking he was super excited to send me a picture that's awesome that's fantastic and that, that that's a that's a good point because people within the body comp industry of bodybuilders uh, 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 there's a lot of people who want to enter into that style of physique competition or bikini competition. However, time is against their uh, their side, especially in this day and age. Uh, you know, with family commitments, work commitments, traffic building up, and uh, now with the efficiency of this time, because usually a bodybuilder or somebody in a body comp industry has to spend about an hour in a gym working out. Then, quite often, as they're preparing for a competition, it's up to an hour in the morning cardio and up to an hour in the evening cardio. And a lot of people just cannot do that. So this is a very efficient tool to allow somebody to pop that into 10 minutes. Now, would you suggest somebody do um, something like this once a day or twice a day? Is twice a day overkill? Okay, so the research shows that if you do this anything more than once every other day, then the marginal improvements to at least your cardiovascular health are negligible. You're not going to overdo it because the bike, obviously the technology in the bike is going to recognize that you've been, you know, going at it like crazy. Um, so it's going to kind of, it, it will do what it needs to do to make sure that the rides that you do on those every other days are going to be the ones that hit the home run. And the rest of them, like, you just, you know, we just understand that you're doing it because you feel like you've got a, like you've got a mental itch to scratch. So we'll, we'll help you scratch it. But, you know, we're doing what we need to do to obviously get you fit. So you don't need to do it more, more than once every other day. Um, if you were, you know, if you did want to build up your endurance, you did want to build up that kind of thing, then yeah, of course, do the do the fat burns. Then, but then, you know, the, the two twenty second sprints doesn't build up your endurance; it just builds your heart strength. Okay, all right, got it. So, well, like I said, I've been doing it every day, and I've been checking my heart rate variability, and it hasn't tanked. So, I guess everybody should quantify it. Maybe look at their recovery, see if they're able to recover from a, a session like this, and kind of uh, and, and take it from there. I guess I'll I'll, I'll quantify it you, uh, for you. I'll I'll do it a couple of times a day for the shorter sprints, and uh, and and see what okay. ha- see what happens there. Um, so uh, so now you have the, you, you you mentioned that you have uh, you know you got the th- the thirty sprints, you have the sixty sprints. Now, is there a reason why somebody should stay within below that? 85 percent um uh heart rate is there a reasoning behind that is that come in studies as well before you actually release the cowl bike yes um it's, a, it's a, actually it's, a, it's an interesting mix between consumer like data we collected about consumer behavior and what the research shows so consumer we've we found that if people were trying to go all out at the beginning, then they fatigued really quickly and it actually made like 90% of the remainder of the workout, like just basically a waste of time. Yeah. And after, after a lot of trial and error, essentially, because look, there's one thing in the lab, you know, you do these, you do these exercises and you're going to do whatever, 30 sprints and you've got the lab technician standing there and he knows exactly what to do. He's measuring all of this stuff. Um, when you're on your own, you know, your mind kind of creeps into it, you know, you're, you, you, maybe you had a bit too much to eat for breakfast or whatever. So we're in the real world. It's just so different to what goes on in the lab or what goes on into the sports facility or wherever you are. And so after loads of trial and error, we understood that the best recommendation to guarantee the highest likelihood that you are going to get the maximum result after doing this ride would be if you did a hundred percent at the beginning and at the end and then the bulk of it is 85% in the middle. And we just we just found out after tons and tons of trials that that was the best thing to do. I mean, what's really cool about what we're doing and about, about the bike is that, you know, every time you do a ride, it's taking data from you three times a second. And every time you do a ride, you're contributing like 100,000 data points to our ecosystem. So we now have millions of data points about people, your body type and other people who have a similar body type to you about how you guys react when you're doing these workouts. So the bike itself is getting exponentially smarter and smarter and smarter. And so, you know, eventually we might turn around and say, guys, you know, we've now seen over, you know, the past month, all these thousands of data points. We're now saying maybe you should go at 80% because you're going to get more of a result, you know. 
the recommendations are going to keep coming out that's being completely guided by data and science in the real world as to what you should do. I mean, it's, that's essentially saying we have the smartest personal trainers who are monitoring three times a second with all of the most advanced monitoring equipment every single person who has one of these products. You know, imagine like, imagine you go into the gym and every single time you do a workout, there's someone measuring you with a hook you up to these wires and there's someone there just monitoring. And then they're going to send off all this information to one big data pool and then all these personal trainers can check it out. I mean, it's just crazy. But that's what we're doing. And so, you know, the more, the more people write, the more educated we get. And so the recommendation might change. But yes, to answer your question, 85%. We recommend it because that's how you're going to get the best result. Yeah, because I guess it's just like, you know, if you're doing a marathon, you go out too fast out of the gate, then, you know, you start walking. You're probably not going to start running again. It's best to pace yourself and lead into, like you said, the more, the more sprints at the end. Now, speaking from an endurance perspective, uh, I've got a lot of listeners uh, that participate in, in endurance events because I started doing Ironman triathlon, kind of looking mm -hmm. like a bodybuilder, an ultra marathon. So thankfully, a lot of my followers have started doing the same. Was, have you measured anything like lactate threshold or FTP tests in regards to the fitness that can be accumulated on the cowl bike in such a short amount of time? So yes, we actually have. And a lot of stuff was done anecdotally by some of our, you know, our athlete clients. Um, I, I will refer you to some research that was done um, not too long ago. Uh, they were done by University of Western Colorado, and actually another really cool study was done by um, now a friend of mine, and he was measuring exactly that kind of stuff. And what he saw, again, to paraphrase it, what he saw is that you know these, these athletes were actually improving their performance as a result of doing the carol rides. Yeah. I, I, I can't see why that wouldn't uh, wouldn't happen, to be honest with you, especially when you're doing the 30 or the 60 seconds, when you are pushing, as, or minutes, sorry, uh, the, the sprints, sprints, let me get it right, the 30 or 60 sprints, when you're pushing it as hard as you possibly can for those eight seconds, and then you have that recovery, and you push it again to your absolute max, and then you have that recovery. That can only help with obviously your cardiovascular fitness and for those in the gym, because what we're trying to do, the reason why we rest in between our sets is because our recovery is gonna dictate our performance for the next set. The better we recover, the faster we recover, the more efficient we recover, the better our performance within that very short interval where we gotta kind of max out. So it's really preparing yourself in a transcendence effect to other areas of your, of your workouts. I completely agree. Okay, so, let me ask you this now with Carol, what is the future? Are you going to be looking at expanding, like you said, with all these data points that you're gathering now and uh, creating more changes? Or are you actually looking at other modalities as well, like a treadmill or other pieces of equipment? So, you know, noting what we said earlier, I guess like it wouldn't be possible to achieve this exercise if you were to do it on any other modality. So our knowledge, right? So, so as, as we understand today, um, right now we're collecting all this data so that we can make the bike better for you and so that we can make the workouts more and more and more advanced because actually it is also funny. Research is showing with the Carol bikes. So it's worth noting that a lot of the research done before was actually done without Carol bikes. Like if we're talking before we came into existence, you know, almost a decade ago, all of the stuff done since the 50s was done using other ergometers and other other lab equipment, and they got great results. Now, now that people are testing these exercises with Carol bikes, you know, research is beginning to show that you can you can get away with just doing this twice a week. And you're going to get like 80% of the benefits. So I would, you know, we think that a lot of the data points and as the bike gets more advanced, we will be pushing towards being able to get those benefits in just two rides a week. You know, we're, we're really trying to make, we're really trying to smash these barriers to most people um, to exercising. You know, if, we, if you can get away with just doing, you know, 16 minutes total time, but on seat a week to get these results. I mean, that's just phenomenal. So at least for where we're going now, we really want the Carol bike to be the best it possibly can be for your heart health. I think when what's also going to be really cool with these data points um, and some of the other data that we collect as well, and we'll start to collect, we'll be able to offer greater insights from your lifestyle about how that's going to impact your HRV, how that's going to impact your body. Um, and you know, when we start to partner up with other brands as well, when we get a kind of a more of a 360 view, people will be really empowered 
to know what to do when. Like you said, you know your body so well that you know if you want to lose 10 pounds in 10 days, you know exactly what to do. Well, most people don't have that level of insight, right? But if they if they are riding the carol bike and it's so easy for them to do it, they don't have to input any information, they don't have to do this, they just ride the carol bike. And for example, they're wearing like a sleep tracker or something else. We can start to tell them, you know, oh, okay, well, this is impacting your HRV like this. They're, they're doing the carol ride at two in the morning. 11 in the afternoon or whatever it is right that that's changing um your body in their following way so then if you had incorporated it with some other kind of tracking software or whatever else you're doing in your life to, to take control then we're going to be able to see some really insightful things that eventually now we're talking way out the line and this is where the ai becomes really cool just by telling us on just by telling us um about your body very basic information and how we can understand you ride the bike and actually things we can see about your face <laughs> <laughs> we'll be able, so you'll notice the carol bike has a camera on it with all the things we don't we don't record yet but we will with all the things that we can see on your face we can actually start to really um dictate and and kind of understand what your lifestyle is like and we'll be able to tell you things that you should be able to do so for example i, um, I read a while ago mcdonald's had invested in ai technology facial recognition technology that could predict with 80 percent accuracy what you were going to order just as soon as you walk through the door wow. before you've even before you've even ordered it right just by looking at your face and so you know in the same in the same vein we're like saying okay if we know this is your body type you've told us you weigh this much and we've you've told us that um you're this tall and you're a man and this is how old you are and we've seen you do these intro rides we've seen you pedal like against against our stress test for six rides okay we know this all about you and now we know what you look like are you a bit chubby around the gills or not you know we'll be able to tell so much about you and then if we've been collecting all this data in the past about sleep about this about this type of person man that's when we really start to be able to deliver some really cool stuff so eventually it'll be like saying you're going to buy the carol bike you're going to have this app you don't have to do anything else you don't have to buy wearables you don't have to track your calories you don't have to do this but we're going to be able to tell you what you should be eating or like what kind of what you should be doing if you want to achieve a 10 10 pound weight loss, that kind of thing. So it's become a really integrated approach. And that I think is when we're gonna see real power, real power. Yeah, that, that's fascinating. You know, there's a couple of things that come up that I really like. Like you said, it, it's, it's a quantification and the accountability of having like a personal trainer there because you've got the female voice telling you to sprint, run away from the tiger. Then you've got the text that comes up and says, don't eat that bit of Kit Kat, which would be obvious which would be great if you had that facial recognition. You can see that person's a little bit yeah. overweight. Do not eat that Kit Kat. Uh, you know, with, with a, a sense of urgency behind the voice. You know, that, that, that sounds absolutely phenomenal. And then you can see your wattage that you're pushing. You can see the heart rate that you got up to on that particular sprint. And maybe you want to push it on the next sprint. And it really it does encourage you to push it that much more. You don't need music blasting in the background. No. Yeah. And, and when Tim first introduced me to uh, Carol, I, I, I researched you guys a lot. And uh, I, I thought on the website, you know, when I saw the website and the person jumping on the bike in a suit and the female with the high heels, I'm like, what is all this about? But then yeah. I quickly realized, wow, this is something that you can do in your lunchtime, within 10 minutes, any time of the day, and you don't have to get changed. Because a lot of people don't work out or do their cardio because now they're going to have to have a shower. Now they need to get changed to go back to work. And that takes up as much time as the workout. But you do not build up a sweat in something so intense in a very short period, especially when you have the recovery. So the efficiency with time or time efficiency is absolutely awesome on this. And I think it's going to be a huge hit because that's one of the things that I have major problems with a lot of my clients. Don't have time, don't have time, mm -hmm, don't have time. Mm -hmm. And this is an answer. So it's great. It's another way that we can come in and say, well, you want to justify an excuse? I got something for you. Yeah, exactly. Huge hit, pun intended. Yeah. Uh, over, <laughs> over the decades of research, the guys have actually never been able to correlate this exercise to sweating. You know, so they would see so many people right on. It's funny. I said to one of my uh, I had it said to my PR lady, she, I was like, so I was like, when, when she first started working for us, I was like, you know, the guess part is you don't have to sweat. She's like, so I don't have to reapply my makeup? I was like, no. And she was like, oh my gosh, this is, this is telling my world. I was like, no, like, I can go do this in my lunch break. Dude, we do it in our lunch breaks. Like, I'm like, okay, one o'clock, I'm going to go for a burger, but just before, or, you know, so I'm going to go for a salad. But before I do that, I was going to go for a quick, uh, quick carrot ride. But the burger salad point, and also I want to bring it up about something you said before, that's another really interesting thing about carol and the ethos is like like i said at the very beginning of the conversation you know we're not trying to tell you 
not to do stuff. So if we saw that you're a bit, I thought this was also kind of funny you, when you said about the kick had made me think of it. When you're, you know, with the facial recognition stuff, we can also tell um, emotional, um, you know, your emotional state. So we can tell you if you're doing a car ride on a Friday, we could be like, you know, dude, go and enjoy like a, a, a slice of pizza, you know, like go, go have at it. You, you might, you might need that. You do need to do yourself a favor. Um, and so, yeah, we, 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 we are going to give people who, like I said, otherwise don't commit to exercise and who for so many reasons, um, you know, they, they need it. We're giving them a solution that's like a no excuse solution. Yeah, if you're obviously an athlete, this is great for you. If you're, if you're a trainer, if you're a body comp guy, this is great for you. But if you're just also your average person, like most of us, who doesn't do the 45 minute workout because the lunch break isn't long enough, there you go. This is a solution. Yeah, yeah, a great solution indeed. So I'm going to put the link to the website in the show notes and we are offering a special for our listeners here uh, today. Woohoo! Okay, so thank you very much, Rahul, for this special. That is $150 off, correct me if I'm wrong, off each Carol bike. All you gotta do is go to checkout on your website and type in Gethin, G-E-T-H-I-N, and you will get that $150 off. Very easy to put together. Even I was able to put it together when it uh, showed up. <laughs> Usually I have to call for a real man to come and do that. <laughs> but uh, Rahul, thank you ever so much for your time and congratulations on such a great device. I absolutely love it. Uh, you know, my, my viewers and listeners know I'm very authentic. I'm not going to push something or promote something to them unless I really believe it in myself. And uh, I'll continue busting my balls on it every single day. But it's only 10 minutes, so who cares? I'm so glad. And you know what? Carol's going to keep busting your balls as well. You know, And I'm excited to see you on the leaderboard. I'm going to keep an eye out for your name. Like It's going to, going to be cropping up. And I will do my best attempt to try to get you. If, if Stephen Venter is listening to this, there's a guy actually in Australia. He's number one. How the guy puts out 1,500 watts in 20 seconds, that's his peak power. I don't know. But he, 1,500. He is, he's, yes. Wow. Six, 641 is my max. <laughs> The guy is an absolute beast. And like, you know, so many people come up to me and be like, dude, I'm, I'm on the leaderboard, but who the hell is this Steven Venter guy? And I'm like, he's, a, he's just a guy, he's a guy who has a carol bike in, in Australia and he's just absolutely smashing it. But is he uh, a so, pro cyclist or something uh, like that? You know, he, he, he actually owns a gym. He owns a, he owns a commercial facility that has some of our bikes. Um, but I don't, I don't actually know what is, what is, fitness background is I, I i've seen the guy on facetime a few times like he looks big but he's not like i don't know man he's just he must be he must have a good diet that's for sure yeah well there's a like i obviously like i said i compete in ironman triathlon and there's some of the guys that i go out riding with and they're pro triathletes and they mm. are so skinny but the amount mm. of wattage that those people can put out is unbelievable unbelievable so uh, yeah man. It's, it's also here's a tip it's like if you want to get, if you want to improve your peak power score, pedal as fast as you can just before the resistance is applied. Because the faster you're going around the wheel, the more power you're going to pump out. It's just, just like the, I think it's just the maths is how it works out. So the, the faster you go when the resistance is applied, because you also have, you're not tired at all there. So the faster you go, bam, smash it at the very beginning, and then you'll hit a high peak. Got power. it. Okay. So as soon as the screen turns red, that's when you just got to max it. Max it, max it. And think going around the wheel, like, you know, like a cyclist would, you know, think, think round, not pushing down. If you think moving feet around that, then you'll, you'll, you'll achieve higher speeds. Got it. Right. Got it. Okay. Well, thank you ever so much for joining me today. It's been an absolute pleasure. And like I said to everybody, check out the links in my show notes and type in get in to get $150 off your Carol bike at checkout. Thank you very much, sir. I appreciate it. And Thanks, Chris. Until next time, that is the Knowledge and Mileage Podcast.